We go, is that okay? Okay, so let's go. Uh, starting now, so hello everybody. Uh, thank you very much for the, in the invitation. So um, I'm a student at Ecole Normale Supérieure in Paris. Um, I'm working with uh, Florence Zakala. And uh, the title of my talk is uh, Exact Asymptotics with Realistic Data. So <clears throat> um, the question of generalization in uh, machine learning algorithms can be tackled with uh, several different frameworks. Uh, and the framework that uh, I will be interested in here is the framework of high dimensional statistics, which is also very heavily linked to a statistical physics of learning, uh, and which is uh, one of the topics of uh, this conference. And um, so what is typically encountered is a uh, more of a typical average case analysis as, uh, as opposed to uh, the worst case analysis uh, found in statistical learning theory. Uh, the focus is on a uh, benchmark random design uh, problems, uh, obtaining exact solutions as opposed to uh, upper bounds, again, uh, which are traditionally encountered in uh, statistical learning theory. Uh, but there is a catch to these exact solutions, which are uh, assumptions that are quite strong. Um, uh, so namely uh, high dimensional problems and in the, the dimensions of the, of the problems go to infinity and uh, random design, random design assumptions. So a question that uh, naturally arises from this is uh, how realistic are, are the statistical physics benchmarks and uh, perhaps what can we do uh, to try to make them more realistic? So uh, let me introduce the, the typical uh, setup uh, that, I, that I will use during this talk is the teacher-student generalized linear model. So the name teacher-student comes from uh, the statistical physics of learning uh, community. However, in machine learning, you could, you could call this a generative model. Learning a generative model is the same thing. So we observe a generative model parameterized by function F0, a ground truth vector W0, and a data matrix X, uh, which is typically taken IID Gaussian. And then what we try to do is uh, reconstruct this model using a student. So here I will take a very simple model, which is a convex generalized linear model, which is parameterized by a loss function L, a convex one, and um, a regularity, a penalty uh, R of W. And as I mentioned before, the dimensions will be going to infinity. And the, the typical goal um, in this type of problem is to try to understand the statistical properties of W star. So for example, how do, can I calculate a mean squared error between W star and W zero, an overlap, and so on and so forth. And uh, there is a very rich literature of results uh, here on, on this type of problem. And the question that I want to ask is, is it possible to go beyond this idea assumption and introduce some correlation to reflect uh, uh, as much as possible, a realistic scenario. So the first uh, thing that I would like to present uh, is a joint work with uh, Bruno Lourero, Hugo Cui, Sebastian Gold, Marc Mezar, Florence Zakala, and Lenkas de Borova, where we proposed um, a block covariate model um, to, to try to create a scenario where the teacher and the student can act on two different feature spaces. And so uh, if you consider samples of, this, uh, of the form here, u and v uh, in a vector of size uh, r to the power p plus d, um, U is described by a covariance matrix, so modeling a feature space Psi, V uh, by a covariance matrix Omega, and the interaction between the two, uh, a covariance matrix Phi. So now the generative model uh, generates labels using the samples U, and so the, the feature map uh, Psi, and the student tries to learn this using the samples V, uh, using the covariance matrix Omega. And so uh, there are many works that have been proposed uh, trying to deal with uh, correlated scenarios. And uh, perhaps the closest to this is uh, this uh, Asti, Montanari, Rosset, and Tipshirani, where they had at a certain point uh, a similar block covariance structure for the specific case of ridge regression. And so here where the idea was to do this for a, a generalized linear model. So um, let's, let's jump directly to the solution. So it's not very nice, but uh, I want to show what it looks like. And so uh, the theorem that we have is if you consider the unique fixed point uh, to, to this set of self-consistent equations, you can exactly characterize um, the training and genderization error as the dimensions of the problem go to infinity. So there are closed form formulas uh, for these quantities. And uh, so the proof uses convex Gaussian comparison inequality. So this is a, these inequalities are a family of proofs which are quite popular at the moment for this type of problem and that work very well for this type of problem. Uh, they were introduced by Mihailo Stojnik uh, in 2013 and popularized in other works uh, later on. Um, so how, I did, how, how well did this work? So again, uh, we were trying to reproduce realistic scenarios. So for ridge regression, uh, as was uh, observed in uh, earlier works, um, a lot of realistic scenarios can be reproduced. Uh, 
feature maps can be included directly in the problem and the random design problem is quite accurate and it works very well. However, it's also, it was also interesting to look at uh, when the model breaks down, which is what you see on the right hand side of the plots. So this is just a logistic regression, so a binary classification task on uh, a synthetic data problem. Uh, so the red curves, which are generated with a type of GAN. Uh, so here the fit is quite good. And in blue uh, is taken directly on the real data. And on the real data, so the, this random design block covariance model doesn't work so well. Um, so we see that classification is more problematic. However, um, I mean, the, the, the Gaussian model is, is quite interesting. We see that it, it captures some features that are interesting. So it would be nice to have another realistic benchmark problem, um, which includes uh, uh, correlated Gaussians and goes beyond the binary classification case. And this motivates us to study a classification of K Gaussian mixtures with a convex GLM. Um, and so further, uh, further uh, motivation for this problem is uh, several scenarios uh, that, has, that have been observed in machine learning recently where uh, Gaussian mixtures are accurate to describe a certain realistic scenarios. So for example, uh, the team of Romain Couillet uh, has shown uh, using random matrix theory that uh, some data generated by GANs can be accurately described by Gaussian mixtures and uh, other works are related to deep learning. And also um, classifying a, K uh, a Gaussian mixture with K clusters, this is a benchmark problem in machine learning, it's quite clear. And uh, on another note, uh, Gaussian mixtures are universal approximators, provided you have enough Gaussians, of course. <clears throat> so let's go. Um, so um, the, the data distribution that we chose, so the generative model, which implicitly defines the teacher in this teacher-student framework. So it's a, a Gaussian mixture model. So I have data points X in R to the power D, one hot encoded labels Y in R to the power K, and a joint distribution uh, with rho K, so the, the, the probability for the, for the clusters and uh, the, Gaussian, uh, the Gaussian densities parameterized by uh, generic means mu k and covariances sigma k. Uh, so here is a familiar picture um, for three, cl three clusters in dimension two. And um, the goal is to try to, to learn this Gaussian mixture, so learn separators using, again, uh, a convex generalized linear model. Uh, and so this time, instead of learning just a vector, so we are learning k separating hyperplanes, so we are learning a matrix W in R uh, D times k. And so uh, examples include, for example, a rich regression, uh, softmax with a cross entropy. So any, any loss and regularizer, as long as it is convex, otherwise um, we don't have the solution. And um, so again, I'm showing you the result. Um, so uh, in, in this, uh, again, with Bruno Lorero, Gabriele Sicuro, uh, Alexandre Paco, Florence Zakala, and Lenkas de Borova uh, in the recent preprint, it has the same flavor as the previous one, so it's a bit heavy. Um, consider a fixed point of a self-consistent set of equations. And again, uh, as the dimensions go to infinity, we can compute exactly uh, the training and generalization error. So here are the misclassification rates. So this formula is not very nice. Uh, it's, it's a bit heavy, um, uh, but I mean, I'm happy to give more intuition because all these results actually have the same core intuition. Uh, so if, if someone is interested later on, uh, I'm happy to discuss more uh, this type of formula. But uh, what's interesting to note is that, uh, so this is a very generic statement. There are very few assumptions that are made. However, it greatly simplifies uh, if you make assumptions on the covariances, for example, if they are diagonalizable in the same spaces, if you make assumptions on the separability of functions, you can get statements uh, that are a lot, uh, a lot clearer with a lot less parameter. And in most relevant cases, it reduces a lot to a low dimensional statement, uh, which allows for a, maybe a more intuitive analysis of what is happening. Uh, so now uh, let's look directly at some examples. So examples for uh, synthetic, uh, synthetic data on uh, random design problems. Um, so here uh, on the left-hand side, uh, we plotted a rich penalized logistic regression on K Gaussian clusters. Uh, with identity covariances, and we plot the generalization error as a function of the sample complexity uh, and for uh, two, three, four, and five clusters. And what we recover is a, a type of curve that had been already observed for two clusters, so for binary classification, where uh, a separability phase transition occurs and uh, there is a kink in the generalization curve, uh, which uh, otherwise, I mean, remains monotonic, but. Uh, and so uh, this type of result, observing separability phase transition, so then we observe them uh, at different point, at different places uh, for a higher number of cluster. Uh, there is a rich literature of this going back to cover in 69. 
Uh, and so here on the right hand side is a plot of the generalization error uh, again as a function of the sample complexity, but this time for different uh, regularization parameters. Uh, and so we see that uh, regularization uh, cancels this kink uh, uh, in the generalization curve. Uh, so there is also a comparison to the base optimal scenario. Again, uh, the fact that uh, regularization removes this kink had already been observed in other models. So I talked about real data. So let's uh, look at an example on real data. And so this is a, a binary classification task on MNIST. And on the left-hand side, what we did is uh, take MNIST, consider the classification task of odds versus even numbers. We took the empirical covariances of the two clusters and we designed uh, our generative model, uh, the random design model with this. And we tried to compare uh, how does the, the random design model compare to uh, the actual regression using a standard machine learning solver? And we see that the, actually the logistic regression cannot make the difference, uh, so the, the prediction is exactly the same, uh, between uh, the real data and the Gaussian approximation. So on the right-hand side is fashion MNIST, uh, so I guess a data set which is a bit more structured. And um, so the there is a discrepancy between, uh, between the, the theoretical prediction in blue with the Gaussian approximation, uh, which is represented by the green stars, and the orange prediction, uh, the orange dots for uh, the, the, the real prediction. And so um, maybe a brute force way to, uh, to try to solve this. So this is another binary classification task on MNIST, but this time classifying 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 versus 5 to 9. And uh, here again, you can do a Gaussian approximation. So this is the P2 with the blue stars, or you can do 10 clusters. And so uh, I give an idealized view of this on the right-hand side. Uh, I just have a data set. I can either approximate it with two Gaussians or four Gaussians. And uh, adding more Gaussians is a brute force way to get closer to the real thing. And, um, and this is a bit what we observe on, on these curves. So now, um, so I will, I will come back a bit to this in the discussion at the end of the, at the, end of the talk. And for the remaining time, I would like to, to talk a bit about the, the sketch of proof and uh, why this was a challenging proof. So um, what are the difficulties here? So we are learning a matrix. Uh, and so in, implicitly, we need to understand how the different hyperplanes are, are correlated by the learning process. And this, first, uh, this is something that's non-trivial. And the second thing is um, each cluster is different. We, we want to allow different covariance matrices. And so intuitively, we cannot use the same quantities to characterize the, the effect of each cluster. And actually, this was observed in a recent paper uh, by uh, the group of Christos Trampoulidis, where they showed that the, the convex Gaussian comparison inequality, so this, this nice family of proof that, I, that I've talked to you about uh, earlier in this talk, uh, they actually break down uh, beyond the least square case for a multi-class classification problem. So just a quick disclaimer, uh, perhaps there is a solution using this method. It's just that now the way they are formulated, they could not find it. Uh, and so we, we did not use this method to solve this problem. So how did we solve this problem? So from the statistical physics side, the replica computation works, uh, but how do we solve this rigorously? And so we used approximate message passing algorithms. So what's an approximate message passing algorithm? Well, it's a family of iterations, which, which has a very nice property. It's uh, inspired by statistical physics. Um, it has a nice property of having exact closed form asymptotics called state evolution equations. What do I mean by that? So I mean that at each time step of this iteration, you can exactly characterize the, the statistical properties of the iterates using a low dimensional equation, uh, low dimensional iteration. And one of the nice things is that uh, AMP, you can, you can treat mat matrix valued variables as a whole. This is no problem. You can handle uh, block correlation structures. So this is called spatial coupling in the AMP, AMP parlance. And so here intuitively we have different clusters which behave differently. So spatial coupling will be useful in the formulation of the problem. And AMP methods are very adaptable. So just a quick bit of history. Uh, initially, uh, as I said, uh, the, these SE uh, state evolution equations were derived in statistical physics uh, using heuristic methods. And the first proof uh, was due to a great mathematician, Erwin Bolthausen. And the proof method that he, that he used was popularized uh, later on by, uh, by Etienne Montanari, uh, notably uh, in two, 2011. So what does an AMP look like? So uh, there, are, there are many different uh, form of AMPs, but the one I'm interested in is the following which is a sequence of matrices U and V uh, defined by a Gaussian matrix Z, which can be a block Gaussian matrix, and two uh, sets of nonlinearities H and E, which, which here are matrix-valued functions. 
So there is a Z transpose H, ZE. So this kind of look like a first order method or a classical descent method. And in addition, you have these two uh, correction terms, momentum terms, and these brackets, they are Jacobian like terms and they are inherent to AMP. So you, you cannot discard them. And they are really uh, crucial to get these nice properties of state evolution equations. So now, how do we use this to solve the problem? So I have a target. So the target is the W star defined by the convex GLM on the Gaussian mixture. I have this tool, which is an iteration that has this nice state evolution property. Now, how do I solve this? I need to design the nonlinearities H and E such that the fixed point of, uh, of the iteration two matches the optimality condition of problem one, which is convex. Then one needs to find the converging trajectory. So in this case, convexity is very helpful. And um, once you have done these two first steps, well, what, did you, what, what have you shown? You have shown that the estimator W star can be found as the fixed point of an AMP trajectory. So this means that the state evolution uh, equations characterize this fixed point. Uh, so this estimator, and, and then all you need to do is use the fixed point of the state evolution equations. And this is what we did. Um, so now just a quick look at the design of the AMP. So the AMP is very often designed from a factor graph representation of the problem. In this case, the factor graph representation is really not obvious. Uh, so what we did is uh, reformulate a bit the optimality condition of the problem and then match it with the fixed point of the AMP iteration. And this actually can give you the, the form that you need for the functions H and E. And so just a quick, um, a quick, uh, quick technical point of the validity of the state evolution equations. So here, uh, actually, when you reformulate uh, the gradient, the, the fixed point, con uh, sorry, the optimality condition of the problem, you, you get this block structure with non-separable functions. So here, L tilde and R tilde are reformulations of the problem, which include the covariance matrices. So there is non-trivial mixing. And the different technical tools have been developed uh, in uh, this Javon Bar and Montanari in 2012 and uh, for non-separable functions in the Berthier, Montanari, and Guyenne in 2018. But the combination of both, so formally, this is really a formal point, but it was not included. So this is included as a side result uh, in, a, in, a, in, a country, in, a, in a recent work with Raphael Berthier, uh, where we prove state evolution equations for a larger class uh, of approximate message passing algorithms. So, um, and yeah, this basically concludes the proof. And um, what are the future directions that are interesting to look at with respect to this work? Well, the, rel the relevance to realistic scenarios, uh, well, I guess it was quite clear from the plots. Okay, Gaussian models are relevant to a certain degree. Um, and then a brute force way to, uh, to try to make Gaussian models more realistic is just to add more clusters. But then if I keep adding more clusters, in the end, as you saw, the formula is already quite heavy. I will just have a problem that is more complicated than the original problem, so this will not be useful. So is there a middle ground, a clever parameterization that allows to describe uh, machine learning problems in an exact or close to exact way, uh, so in the statistical physics way, and at the same time um, remains sufficiently intuitive to be useful? And um, on the technical side, uh, so there are a lot of technical improvements that can be made uh, related to AMP methods. So there are really a bunch of possibilities offered by uh, approximate message passing methods that can be composed uh, to, to almost an arbitrary degree of complexity. Um, and, and they are very interesting objects. Um, so here uh, we are working with uh, dimensions that go to infinity, but actually uh, AMP methods, they are amenable to finite size analysis. So how fast do we need the dimensions to go to infinity? And so it's possible to characterize this. And uh, a lot of work has been done in this direction by uh, Rush and Venkat Ramanan in 2018. And finally, uh, universality properties. So the randomness of the IID Gaussian core can be replaced by a universal uh, uh, IID matrix. And uh, so one of the core work on this was done by Bayati Lelarge and Montanari in 2015. And uh, with this last slide, I would like to conclude. Thank you all very much for your attention. And uh, I would like to thank the wonderful collaborators that uh, have worked with me on this project. So Bruno Lorero, Gabriele Sicuro, Raphael Berthier, Lencas de Borova, and Florence Zakala. And uh, thank you again. Thank you, Cedric, for this very clear uh, talk. It was very useful and pedagogic. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Um, so Cynthia, uh, Cynthia Roche is the, is the next speaker from Columbia University.
whenever you, one second, sorry, I have to stop the recording.